Hello and welcome to Hill Stadium on the campus of Thorne Academy. I'm Zach Taranko here with Jeff Christianberry bringing you some Class A South semifinals playoff boys lacrosse between the home team, the number two Thorne Academy Golden Trojans, and the away team, the number three South Portland Red Riots. It's going to be a big matchup today. These two teams looking to move on to the final against the winner of the number one Kate versus number four Scarborough. And right now we are hearing Gary Stevens, our athletic director here at TA, giving the starting lineups. But Jeff, going into this game, South Portland was TA's only loss in the season. What uh, What's going to be the factor in this game uh, between these two teams? Well, certainly Thorne Academy wants to avenge that only loss of the season. It was a little while ago, and uh, it was on the road, I believe, too. So mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of things can change. Uh, talking to Coach Hersey and some of the players, too, it, they definitely feel confident that it was a game that was a little fluky for TA. Um, as, you, as you mentioned, if you look at some of the common opponents, you know, South Portland really struggled against Cape. I think they lost by double digits um, and also lost to Scarborough as well. So coming into the game, confident. You know, you're at home. Um, a big playoff day here at, on campus. The baseball team is also in the Class A South semifinals right now over on the baseball field. We'll give a periodic updates. We'll be able to see the scoreboard from the press box here um, happening at the same time today. Um, but if you look at TA, I mean, the, this is the kind of game they should take care of business. You know, if yep. they're really a state championship team. Um, unfortunately, we won't know the outcome of the other game. Uh, Cape is playing Scarborough at 3 o'clock today, so we will not know the, the, the outcome of that game. Um, you know, the winner, uh, the higher seed, will host the regional final either Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, Thornton Academy, of course, has a chance to host that. Most people will think Cape's going to take care of business there. I think Scarborough scored an overtime the other day to, to advance, so yep. um, Cape will be heavy favorites in that one. So... Just get the job done today, really. You know, stay healthy. Um, I don't think that they feel like they're outmatched physically, and you know, set up hopefully for TA fans setting up that uh, that huge um, rematch against Cape Elizabeth. Yep. Assuming both teams advance, and then maybe on to states next week. They're announcing the starting lineups now for TA. We want to uh, first thank them our, some of our sponsors here on TA TV. We want to thank PNC Insurance, well, Soccer Benefit Savings. We also want to thank the Webb Family Law Firm for hosting our pregame show as well as our halftime and postgame show later in the broadcast. If you have any trouble here during the, the summer season, need some help, you can always call the great people at Webb Family Law Firm or you can go online at weblawmain.com. That's Webb with two Bs. As you said, talking about baseball is playing currently right now. Give it a little update. Girls Lacrosse lost uh, in the quarterfinals to uh, Cape Elizabeth, actually, and then softball lost to Wyndham just yesterday. So... The boys lacrosse team and boys baseball, the only two teams left who are looking to get that state title. One thing I don't know, and I should know this, is is if we have any athletes at the New Englands this weekend. That probably do, I would think. I think a couple. For track. But I haven't seen anything from, from Mr. Stevens. So. But if we do, then good luck to them. But then that's it. We're down to just a couple teams, which makes sense, I guess. We are here on June 11th, and <laughs> if both teams advance to states, it'll be a week from today. Baseball will be at St. Joe's, and I'm not sure exactly where – Crosses. Maybe Fitzpatrick? That's usually where it is, the mm -hmm. state championship. I don't think we're doing an anthem today, so we're just going to get this thing rolling. TA won their quarterfinal matchup 24-3 to over Noble. That was a big game for Thorne Academy. In that game, Alex St. John, who is a long stick defenseman, had five goals, two assists for seven points. Ethan Blank had four points, and Jacob Marka had a hat trick. Got a couple guys who scored their first varsity goal. I heard as well. Jack Parity scored one. Yep. On the it's, it's just so tough. I mean, we talk about the seeding and everything in lacrosse, and it's definitely a sport where they need to look at the playoff structure and mm -hmm. see how many teams should really make it. And yeah, I mean, th that doesn't help anybody. <laughs> Twenty-four yeah. to three, and we're seeing lopsided scores all over the place in the playoffs. So, um, especially over in the north. So we'll see how it goes. But at this point, Thorn Academy just. Looking to get to back to a Class A regional, South regional final. On the season, Jordan Flynn led the Trojans with 30 goals and was tied for first with 46 points with Jacob Marcotte. South Point, on the other hand, has had some success as well. They had over 9-2 on the season. They beat Bonnie Eagle, uh, I believe, 13-5. Uh, in that quarterfinal game, some big players for South Portland. Beckett Melhorn with four goals in the win versus TA earlier in the year. Jack Dreyfus had six goals and ten points in the quarterfinal win over Bonnie Eagle. And Brady Demers, another consistent scorer on the team for the Red Riots. As we see the meeting of the teams at midfield. 
four quarters of varsity lacrosse here. A little different, different than the girls structure with two halves. I think we mentioned uh, baseball swing Marshwood over there. I think they're the 12 seed. That's yeah. We're trying to figure out a couple upsets. They beat Scarborough 3-2 to two yesterday. That's the only thing about this is you get back-to-back -back games. I don't know what TA's pitching structure was yesterday, but they did. I don't, I don't think they got the 10-run rule, or they, I think it went 9-0, so. But either way, we're ready for some boys lacrosse action. In goal for the Red Riots is number 34, Ben Q, and for Thorne Academy is number 19, a junior, Jacob Parento. And face-off will come between Cole Mishu and looking for a number here. Uh, number 17, that's Brady Frank on the ground, looking to see who can pick it up. Alex St. John's in the scrum. And there's a fight for it. And the ball will still rolling around. No one can seem to pick it up. Finally grabbed by South Portland. It's number 12, Brady Angle. Oh, TA's got it now, 91. St. John hands it off to Ethan LeBlanc. Make sure you uh, tell us where you're watching from today and who you're cheering for in the chat. We'll try to get you a shout out on the air. That one's stolen away. Here comes Brady Frank, a senior for South Portland, crossing the 40-yard line. And this comes back out to number 19, Brady Demers. Boys lacrosse is a very fast-paced game. We'll see who can get the first goal. On the far side, here's Beckett Melhorn. Back to Lucas Melhorn. Very common name. I remember, a lot of people remember Cooper Melhorn. He's a fantastic player for South Portland for many years. Beckett Melhorn puts it behind. Now trying to move it is Jack Dreyfus lost control. And it'll be T.A. Pizal, T.A. Ball violation on South Portland. Those are the turnovers you can't have. We talk, you know, I'm sure we'll mention the Celtics, you know, they, their issue of turnovers. <laughs> like, especially when you're South Portland, you're the underdog here. You cannot have unforced turnovers like that in the offensive zone. You want to control this ball, control the clock, keep it a low-scoring game. I know they won 11-10, I believe, was last time, or 12-11. 11-10, uh, yep. Yeah, you don't, you don't, I don't think you want that kind of game right here again with T.A. You want to win this game 7-6, 7-5, something like that. So you cannot turn the ball over like that. Here's Nick DeLeo, now on the far side is Jacob Marcotte. Lucas Hubbard with control, now handing it off to Bil Kobe Bilodeau. Bilodeau lost control of it, but keeps it going. Kobe Bilodeau, not one of the high scorers in this team, but one of the tri-captains, and he has a great job controlling the offense in the midfield. Now back to Nicholas DeLeo, and DeLeo will step back. Just a few minutes into the game here. It's a little hard to see the clock from this angle. I think that's nine minutes. Yeah, 9.45. Yeah, yeah, it is a little tough in the it's sunlight. A, yeah, the Bright sun. sunlight going here at Hill Stadium. It's going to be a violation there on TA. So, <coughs> ball will be for South Portland. Cullen Adams will take it out. You might remember Cullen Adams. He's a fantastic hockey player for South Portland this past year. That one's lost and been picked up now by St. John. Alex St. John looking for the short pass. Inside comes Ronan Flynn. Flynn shoots, and it's just wide. Q, the keeper, may have gotten a piece of it. That'll be wide, and it will stay on the stick of number nine. That's Noah Verano. Verano, not, Verano now in behind to Jacob Marcotte. Marcotte to Ronan Flynn. Flynn taking a step back. Now over to Jackson DeLeo, younger brother of Nick DeLeo. And then off to Ronan Flynn. South Portland trying to be aggressive on defense right now. Flynn stepping up to the middle. Flynn trying to get to the defense. Rethinks a long shot and then gives it off to number 17. That's Kobe Bilodeau. Then back out up top to Lucas Hubbard. Not a lot of subs so far, only a few. Might see them go into their subs in diff uh, later quarters. Now a fight for it. Ball's in the ground, seeing who can pick it up. And this one picked up by a long stick defenseman. That's Jamin Center. Well, so far, it's just a few minutes in. South Portland not playing scared at all. They're playing like the aggressors. They got to they got to kind of lay it out on the field here. You know, that, that's maybe kind of a silly cliche, but they really can't play scared. They have to play as they're going to be the aggressor to have a chance to win. Ball finds its way to Beckett Malhorn, then back out to Jack Dreyfus. And Dreyfus with Dreyfus with a nice 10-point performance in the win over Bonnie Eagle this past week. 
Remember, you can watch this game many ways. Facebook, on YouTube, also on Twitter, but also on your uh, Roku, on your Amazon Fire TV or Apple TV. If you download the BoxCast app, you can watch it on your big screen TV, which is pretty awesome. And again, we don't, we're going to have to, we'll end this game thinking, uh, or assuming it's our last broadcast of the year, because we will not know the outcome of the Cape game. Of course, if Cape loses, and TA wins, we'll have that regional final for you here from Hill Stadium. If not, then this will be our last broadcast of the entire 2021-22 school year. We'll talk a little bit more about that in the second half. That was a viol uh, foul call on Thorn Academy. This one comes back for South Portland. The pass inside, looking for a shot. Goes over the net, and Dreyfus was there, so South Portland will keep possession. South Portland will take this, though. I mean, it's almost as I don't want to say they don't want to score so quickly, but again, they're wasting this clock. They're going to shorten this game. If they can waste another three or four minutes off the clock and get a goal here, not a bad thing for the Red Riots. Just under seven and a half to go in the first quarter. TA also playing some strong defense. That one's going to be a turnover by South Portland. And another one there. Red Riots not really not taking care of it on that front. And the possession they wanted. Now here is Parento. Parento, the long pass, finds its way to number 96. That's Carter Gagne. And then looks like a foul call. It'll be TA possession. Cody Ruff, number 24, pick it up. Ruff's first year as a varsity player has been great. He's been a big physical Highlight for this team this year. He's done a great job helping TA on offense. We'll see Ethan the blank check back into the game. On the far side, here's Bo Preston. Preston gives it to Cody Ruff. And now Ruff taking some time to try to find a pass. Ruff hands it off to Ethan the blank. You might remember the blank scored that game tying goal with about one second left in that overtime win Cape, yeah. versus Cape Elizabeth and then Ronan Flynn put the overtime winner in. In the end, uh, the game was a little bit more relevant in the heels because TA still did not beat Cape in the heels, but still. Long shot by Ronan Flynn's just wide and Cody Ruff will pick it up behind the net. Yeah, it was unfortunate because uh, Cape Elizabeth's other loss came to a Class B team, so it didn't really affect the heel point right. standings. Yeah, I think they ended up with two losses and yep. it just didn't matter. Here is Jacob Marcotte. Marcotte trying to get inside. Met by a few South Portland defenders. An underhand shot is just wide. So far, TA is getting some decent shots. They're just not yeah. putting it on the, on the cage. Just wide of the post. And Ben Q, the keeper, is doing a great job for South Portland, really being aggressive and trying to dive for some of those balls. Here's now Ronan Flynn. Flynn is stick checked but keeps with it. Flynn has to reset and go around. He hands it off to Marcotte. Marcotte then to Verano. Verano trying to get inside, a shot blocked. I thought Verano had a great opportunity when he first caught that ball. Yep. And he tried, did a little deke, and it didn't work out there. So another empty possession for the Trojans. Q gives it to number 10. That's Cullen Adams. Adams now trying to help South Portland get up the field. Stolen away by St. John. That long stick helps. St. John with speed getting through. St. John turning. Underhand scores. What a play. All by himself. That is now his sixth playoff goal of this year. Just the, picks off the ball, intercepts it, and then runs down the field by himself, spinning, scores a goal, I mean, and puts TF by one. South Portland's going to kill themselves for that one. That is just an inexcusable turnover in the middle of the field. When you have possession, you just had a great defensive play, and you just throw it away in the middle. South Portland coach is obviously not happy about that one. And Thornton Academy takes a 1-0 lead. Big goal for Alex St. John. And TA leads 1-0 now. We've got about 5 minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first quarter. This one picked up by Hayden Whitney. And now Whitney. You wonder what that's going to do to momentum, Zach, because this could be, you know, one of those roller coaster games or a snowball effect. You know, you, you, you South Portland plays so well for 7 minutes, gives up a really cheapy in terms of a turnover. And now TA gets the ball right back on possession and come down and take a two-goal lead. Now here is number 15. That's Cameron Raymond, the junior. Back at midfield, Raymond with some speed, getting around the defender, and gives it off to Verano. Verano now trying to control it. Good move by Verano, but South Portland still trying to be really aggressive there on defense. Now trying to get inside, a shot by Hubbard's wide of the post. It'll be out of bounds, but it will be still TA ball. I think Nick DeLeo will have it on the far side of the field. 
And TA with that nice one nothing lead there, giving them some momentum. But Southport is still in this one. I mean, you look at the last game we did, the girls lacrosse game, and they were down by 11 at one time. They came back all, only to be down by three or That's four, I believe. Yeah, yeah, so they scored seven in a row there. Games just don't, are, you know, can go forever and can be a big part of this game. This one's taken away. That's a turnover there by TA. You don't want to give away. Here comes so the poor, but they give the ball right back again. That that It's an outlet pass to the midfield right now. They're just giving it away too easily. Here now is behind the net. It's going to be Jacob Marcotte. Marcotte will have it. Here's Verano. Verano gives it off to Raymond, but it was just wide. Raymond kind of misangled where that ball was going to be placed. It's another turnover. Both teams a little uh, careless with the ball so far. Yeah. I don't know if it's the early start. It's 11 a.m. here on Saturday morning. Not the best start you want. They all sit, maybe they all sit up watching the Celtics last night. I don't know the time yeah. that game ended. but Another careless turnover for South Portland. Whitney. Long pass, and then just turns it right back over. See, for South Portland, they're turning it over in the midfield in transition. Thorne Academy, at least, when they're turning it over, they're in the attack, so they're not giving it up in a vulnerable position. Now they're going to turn it over again. I see one of these coaches called timeout here. Well, there's only three and a half to go in the quarter, but got to settle their, Coach. their guys down. Coach Hersey going to try to figure something out. Whoever stops giving up those turnovers and changes that momentum. Might be able to grab a goal here. Now in the midfield is Caleb Jewers. Okay, just on, right on cue. Yep, there's a timeout there by South Portland. We'll take a break here on TATV. Be back for the rest of the first quarter. Hey, Dan. How's that proposal coming? Just finished. I am sending it right now. Okay, good. <laughs> How are we looking for noon? We got like two minutes. Dan. We are back here with just three minutes and 12 seconds to go in the first quarter. Again, I'm Zach Taranko here with Jeff Christianberry on TATV, bringing you some boys Class A South semifinals lacrosse. Right now, TA leads South Portland 1 0 off the Alex St. John turning goal on the takeaway in transition. TA holding, I would say, the overall dominance in this game so far. Both teams turned the ball over. South Portland's had a few chances. And it's a very tight game so far. That's what we expected. TA, I, I mean, and in my eyes, came in as the favorite. You know, they had the better season. Um, you could say some of the teams that South Portland lost to, TA, TA was able to beat both of them. So TA's definitely shown their, their strong offensive game. But South Portland trying to be really aggressive. That's a very long pass looking for Dreyfus. Another turnover by South Portland. That timeout didn't really seem to do much for them. And so T will have possession. It'll be now Jacob Parento, the keeper, running up past the 20 yard line now, looking for a pass. He's going to go short in stride, gets it to Mason Pollen. Pollen fakes a pass and goes long to Verano. Verano trying to find inside. Still has it, is Marcotte back to Verano. Verano on the ground, make it found its way to LeBlanc. Now LeBlanc taking his time, handing it off to Jackson DeLeo. And TA trying to move around a little bit. Jackson DeLeo, nice move, scores! Jackson DeLeo got the space, took the shot. That's goal number two for TA. They lead now over South Portland, starting to grab some more momentum. Simple play, and the longer it goes on here, and South Portland continues to turn the ball over. It's been a while now since they've had a legit offensive possession, so 
Good for TA here, up at 2 nothing. You feel like if they get up four or five goals, then it's going to be a real tough, tough one for Southport to come back for. Cole Mishu trying to win the faceoff. No one can seem to find it. Now finally Cole Mishu has it. Mishu, a very good faceoff taker this year. Nice pass inside. LeBlanc tries to get inside to Marcotte. Couple beautiful passes and Jacob Marcotte scores his fourth goal of the playoffs. And the lead is now 3-0 for TA. Snowball effects, Zach, as I talked about it. It was, you know, it just takes that one to get the guys confident after about seven minutes of no goals. And now T.A. scored a trio of goals here in just a couple minutes. Beautiful passing. St. John grabbing an assist on that play. Pass it to LeBlanc. Then LeBlanc found Marcotte inside. South Portland starting to far da fa fall down a little hole. This one won by T.A. And while losing his stick is Whitney. Whitney, good job. Forcing the pressure, Whitney has it now. And Whitney will send it way down to LeBlanc. Great pass from Whitney, finding the open man. LeBlanc was thinking about a shot. Lost control of it, but was able to get the pass off in time to Flynn. Nice little breeze here at Hill Stadium, at least up I'm here. I'm still hot, I'm still <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's, it's pretty stuffy in this uh, press box. We opened all the doors and windows, but. It's not as, uh, as hot as it's been on other days. Turnover by TA there, but again, when they're turning it over, they're turning over at least in a, in a generous position for them. I mean, they're not turning over in a bad spot. That one's lost control of, but picked up, and they're going to say stepped out of bounds. Another turnover for South Portland. They are completely out of sorts offensively. Can't get the ball Brady, settled. Brady Frank tried to keep it in. He could not, and that will. I don't know. If, not sure what the call is. Got a flag down. See at the ref. TA's really fired up, whatever's happening. I'm definitely fired up I after that may, play. It may have been like an after the play kind of yeah. thing, because 17's now sitting in the box and get a lecture from the coach. That is Brady Frank, one of the captains. Frustration setting in. I mean, they just cannot get anything going offensively. And down 3 nothing here after playing so well in the first few minutes. I mean, TA gives up with that turnover, and they're right on to defense, putting pressure on, and that's why it went out of bounds. And it looks like Frank was a little frustrated, may have gone an unnecessary foul. Here's Cameron Raymond, TA on the man advantage. They could try to go up by four here. Alex St. John with that short stick. St. John finds the pass to Raymond. Now here's Verano. Verano with some space shot. Ooh, he tried to, like, like – one time that in. Yeah. Couldn't get it there. And now here comes South Portland. South Portland oh. almost got it to another turnover. Number can, 19, Brady they can, Demers. They cannot get anything going offensively. And that's a great chance right there. But those are the mistakes you can't make in a semifinal game. Looks like there was a 30 second call, by the way, in South Portland. So it's even again. Under minutes to go here in the quarter. Here's Raymond. Raymond finds Bo Preston. Bo Preston trying to get inside. But the ball is now with Raymond, and Raymond taking his time. We're down to just under 30 seconds to go in the first quarter. Here comes Raymond. Raymond almost lost it, gave it off. A long shot goes wide. And it'll be Marcotte again to grab it. We're down to 22.8 seconds to go. Again, TA leads 3-0. Marcotte looking for a pass, lost control. Still fighting for it, and now a flag coming up. And it's going to be on, I believe, T.A. For a hold with 10.4 seconds left, so not what you want no, at this moment. Not. But still, overall, great quarter for Thornton Academy. Up by 3-0. Yeah. I mean, they're you know, not giving up any goals. If you do that, you're going to win a lot of matches. So 10 seconds for South Portland to do something with it. Might be able to get a, a goal off. Trying to get inside now. Five seconds. And they're not going to try to do much with it. And Interesting. 
That'll do the first quarter. So Dorn Academy, three quick goals in a few minutes, and they lead 3-0. We'll take a break here on THVV. Be back for South Portland's man advantage in the second quarter. We are back as the first quarter is over. Now into the second quarter. South Portland has a man advantage. We've switched sides. TA now going right to left. South Portland going left to right on your screen. And they're looking to get their first goal of the game. Baseball up 4 nothing is the last latest we heard early on. That should be should be a 10 run rule game, let's be honest. If TA, I mean, they've, well, they've they, shut out just about everybody this year. I don't know if, they, uh, if they'll do that, though, because I remember the, the – um, they beat Biddeford like 20 to zero. I think that game should have gone into the 10, 10 run rule. Yep. But South Portland with a chance here. Dreyfus lost control, but still has it. Sean is low and they're just gonna let it go. Be picked up by Brady Demers. Here is Beckett Melhorn trying to get inside to Demers. And he just gave a pass away to Parento. I think he's trying to pass it across the face of Golds. Didn't have enough on it. This one picked up by Verano. Good job to stay on this side of the field. He's pressured by number 12. That's Brady Angle. This pass goes way long to Cody Ruff. And now back is Jack Brownstein. And the man advantage is going nowhere. And I think it's over now at this point. 11-10 to go in the second quarter. TA still leads 3-0. This pass finds its way to Brady Angle. Look at South Portland, obviously, a little disappointed the way that second half of that quarter, but he needs some goals here. Dreyfus, another giveaway, and now Whitney's coming out with it. Dreyfus had a good chance to shoot, but tried to pass it away instead. Hayden Whitney almost took that cross check in the back. Here's Verano to Marcotte. Oh, Marcotte was, lost it. That was a goal guaranteed right there if he gets that pass off. So picked up and given back to Ben Q. Now here's Beckett Melhorn. Beckett Melhorn passing it inside. RTA trying to get set on defense. This is one of South Portland's only first trying to set plays. Here comes Mason Pollen trying to get a stick in there. He could not. Here's Drew Foley. Drew Foley gives it off to Jack Dreyfus. Dreyfus, the long pass. Now some good ball movement by South Portland. Beckett Melhorn getting some chance inside. Underhand shot. Good save by Parento. And St. John wins the race to it. It'll be TA ball. Good work by TA on defense. South Portland not giving up any turnovers now, but that allows for TA to get some good defensive stops, and it's working. Good move by St. John. And now St. John got a pass midfield, and here they go. 
St. John at the 30-yard line, still moving with some speed. Gives it off to, I believe that's Ronan Flynn. Flynn couldn't find anything inside. Gives it out to Nick DeLeo, and DeLeo will step back. Off the directions from his coach. Carter Gagne beats off the sub. And now it looks like they get some more sub changes. Yeah, patience can be the name of the game here for TA up by three goals. Down to nine minutes in the second quarter. Nick DeLeo now stepping up, looking for a short pass. He fi finds it to Flynn. Nice move by Ronan Flynn. Flynn getting inside, finds a pass instead. Now Raymond out up top. Trying to get some movement. Verano to Raymond. Raymond, nice cut inside. Raymond goes over the top. And a great save by Ben Q. The one-on-one -on -one move. This long pass finds the pocket of Brady Angle. And now here comes South Portland. St. Nice. Jo John with defense, and that's going to be another turnover. Yeah, Q's definitely not been the issue so far for South Portland. Some great saves. It's really, again, this midfield and this transition to attack has just been way too turnover prone. Marcotte inside to Ronan Flynn. And Flynn grabs the goal. Nice pass from Marcotte. It's now 4 nothing, and T.A. is starting to take away in the midfield, and they're moving forward. It's 4 just, nothing. It's just so easy, Zach. It's turnovers that le leading into quick goals. Not only just obviously giving up the goal, but it's just demoralizing when you, you think you have an attack going the other way, and then two passes after a, an un unforced turnover. And it's a big difference. You know, It's one thing if you're being super pressured and, and lose the ball that way, but South Portland's just kind of throwing the ball around right now, and... They define themselves down four goals, and it's getting to that point where they can't really get down by much more than this, especially because they just haven't scored here. We're almost a quarter and a half into this game. Faceoff is one, and now it's sent forward. Almost a turnover, but a good pickup by Caleb Jewers. Now Jewers to Drac Dreyfus. Nice move by Dreyfus. Dreyfus checked hard as he was going inside right in front of the keeper. That's going to be a penalty. And for a cross check. Might be worth it though. I mean, that's one of those that, that was probably gonna be a goal there for South Portland. So maybe you take a minute in the box and if you don't give up a goal here, you know, man down, then it might be worth it for TA. We'll see. But this is already uh, kind of a must score opportunity here for South Portland. So a man advantage now for the Red Riots. They're down by four. They need a goal at this point in the game. We've reached exactly the eight minute mark. Balls up top with Lucas Melhorn. Now South Portland trying to wrap around the net. Beckett Melhorn looking for a pass. Melhorn getting it back out to Cullen Adams. Good movement and stolen away by Hayden Whitney. Whitney now spinning around. Whitney falls down, he keeps going with it. So you got a timeout. Good timeout there. Call by Coach Tracy. We will keep it here for the timeout. While we have some time, we... We'll check the baseball scores. Yeah, we'll check, check, the K peek we'll out the, the side of the press box. Yeah. But we will again mention that uh, this is most likely going to be our last broadcast of the year. We are not, we're not sure if, South, if, uh, excuse me, if Scarborough could pull off an upset on Cape Elizabeth. Uh, it could be a uh, another home game for the Class A South Final. The state championship uh, against what is presumably Falmouth, uh, who is the powerhouse in the Class A North, that would be at a neutral site, so we wouldn't be able to do that game. We might be able to get some coverage, some photos as well, but we'll keep, th we'll keep people updated on uh, TA social media pages. But we also, again, want to thank our sponsors here this year, uh, Packwell and Carroll Insurance and Soccer Biddeford Savings. Done a great job. We thank them for the sponsorship. We also want to thank the Web Family Law Firm. Again, they're hosting our halftime and our post-game show. But they're great people there that they are always willing to help out. You can go uh, call them or go to weblawmain.com to get some more research or some more information. That's Web with two Bs, just reminding you. And, again, giving you update baseball. Still getting a score. What's the score, do we think? Five or six. Five or six to nothing. It's hard. The the the. Uh, the board is very far away from the press box, but somewhat visible. 
And then, but TA just had runners on first and third in the second, and that grounded out to end the inning, but still leading either five or six to nothing. Comfortable lead over the Marshall Hawks. And now we're back in this game, and the man advantage is over. That's a check on Ronan Flynn, lost control he, he of it. He dropped it, fell again. I mean, it's back to back. Uh, moments he fell. And some big fights for it. And finally, Bo Preston. Gives a little check there and a couple of shout outs here. We have someone watching from Canada Lake. Ooh. Um watch someone's watching from a cruise as well. That's pretty cool. That Wi Fi is not usually pretty uh, fast. Yeah. So if they can see it in H D then That's awesome. Congrats. We also have someone watching from the garden. Last name Taranko, so Someone he oh my god. I can't believe my dad would say he's watching <laughs> from the garden. At <laughs> first I thought it was a TD garden. I'm like, no, 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 he's he's talking about Madison Square Garden, but he's not at Madison Square ah, Garden. Well good, because you know, they're they lost the other night. They're done. He, they're, well, they're not. It's, it's they're, over tonight. No, it's over not. tonight. It's are they he, playing tonight? He, yeah, they're yeah, playing they're playing in Tampa, so he was trying yeah, to right. he was trying to convince me earlier we should go to MSG and do the watch party thing where everyone goes and like yeah, that'd be, well, that, yeah. I mean that sounds like a fun idea, but I don't I wouldn't want to go, especially if they lose. Like drive all the way to New York yeah. just for them to lose. That was a brutal ending of the game of the night. But yeah. Well, well, it was in the garden, so you know. It was in the garden. Well see, that's what I call it. It's gonna you call it MSG because I yeah. think T D Garden I is think the T garden. garden. Yeah, if you're yeah. but I think if you're anywhere else except for New England then Yeah, it's it, we hear garden, you probably yeah. think Madison Square, but all right, here is Beckett Melhorn with it. Good defense by Mason Pollen trying to get a stick in there. And finally, an extra check, and now Pollen's going to the box. Well, see, that would have been a that would have been a a not an unforced turnover. That would have been a really yeah. a hustle turnover there, but a little too football-y. <laughs> I'll use that term. By Mason Pollen, state champion in football, I'm trying to pick up the second of the year. He was uh, the captain linebacker, wasn't he? He controlled the the the, back, the linebacking. He did. He had an interception. If I remember, he had a huge play that interception game, yep. at the beginning of Pick the six. state championship game. Reminiscing on those past. I think uh, it's a thirty-second. Yep. They give that little T with their arms there. I think the refs. I think it's a thirty-second technical foul. They call it. But again, another opportunity for South Portland to get on the scoreboard. They need something here. One thing I think is crazy here, looking at both teams, they have very big rosters, but also a lot of staff workers helping out, handing out water, and working with the team. It's just great to see the amount of involvement. Definitely the biggest coaching staff outside of football. Yeah. Here's now Bucket Melhorn getting inside, and wow. a save. And now a late flag. And now second th one? three flags thrown. I think maybe they're all just in consensus. I'm not sure why. Three were thrown. I think it's going to be double fouls here, maybe. I think you definitely have a hit to the head, I think, by T.A., and then there may yeah, be retaliation. Alex St. John. Let's see what happens here. Number six, number two is going for the box for South Portland. Similar to the play of um, earlier where it's got a foul, where just the, you're getting inside, you have to kind of put pressure on and Maybe a little bit too hard of a hit from St. John. I'm not sure what the penalty will be. You still have one TA guy in the box. Usually anywhere from 30 seconds to, I think, two minutes. Two minutes yeah. almost is, is what you might call like a double minor in other sports. We'll see what they choose to do. Both teams getting a, a much-needed rest here. We're down to 5.51 to go in the second quarter. So right now there are two TA guys in the box, one from the previous penalty, which shouldn't have more than maybe 15 seconds on it. Yep. And then... South Portland also. We'll see if we can maybe even maybe listen. maybe even less than that because it was uh, only a thirty second technical. I'll see if I can hear what the ref says. I'm not sure what the. Okay. And Coach Hersey okay. is. Okay, so there's one a one minute for South Portland and a two minute for St. John. I think that's what Coach Hersey's not happy about. And the coaches are now conferring. South Portland doesn't. They feel like they shouldn't have a penalty at all. That's what they're upset about. So neither coach is happy. I mean, that's how the, you know the rest did a pretty good job, and neither coach is happy. <laughs> or they're both doing a great job. It's, you know, rever yeah. reverse psychology kind of something thing. like that. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's going to be a two-minute advantage for very short.
for South Portland. So if I'm if I'm correct, at least in this moment, TA is down two players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just and then, for the yeah, just for this little bit until the first technical foul. And then, and then it'll, be, it'll just it'll be, be even for a minute, and then a man advantage for a minute for South Portland. Oh, okay. So they each have at least one minute in the box, and then St. John had a two minute. It's very confusing too because I don't know like. In do they a sport go like five on five, or do they go. Back well, to it's yeah. it's weird because like in a sport like hockey, the player comes out of the box and has to be on the ice. But I don't know if Mason, let's like say for example, for example, Mason Pollen, if he'll just go off to the bench and somebody else will come on. Or usually, that's what it depends on the situation, I guess. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll just keep an eye on the number of players. So right now, TS, it's, yeah, it's five against four right now. Uh huh. And it should be six v six inside the box. So. And we'll keep an eye on when TA gets one player back. You'll see someone sprint on, I'm sure. And we'll also keep an eye on the box for the other two guys. South Portland's trying to get as much for this as they can because they need a goal at this point. Yeah. Down 4 nothing. So keep an eye on the, another Thornton Academy, a, a defender coming into the screen. Here's Dreyfus. they got to get a shot off. Beckett Melhorn might want to try getting inside again, you know, take a hit. Oh, here it comes. Yep, so TA's now only down one man. Oh, no, it's even. Sorry, it's even. Finding for it, Beckett Melhorn, good defense. And another flag though coming in late from behind, a push. So it's gonna be a two man advantage now. That was on Mason Pollen. excuse me, so the, the, the penalty before was Kyle Lasur. This is Mason Pollen, number 32. Let's see how long this one is. Technical, so 30 seconds, it'll be 30 seconds of a two man advantage. That's just a not a good penalty there because the ball is pretty much going out of bounds and the and the attacker is going nowhere. And you don't want to push out of bounds like that. So two man advantage right now. Yep. This is where it's they not, have to score. Yeah. I mean, if they don't score on this. I don't, I'm not sure what. Uh, what else do you need yep. to score? Especially if you're not about four. If you're down by one or two, whatever. But just you it's been got a long, uh, long couple of minutes here. Yeah. You got to take as many shots as possible. Here's Dreyfus. Dreyfus now trying to get some space. Goes to Beckett Melhorn. Back to Dreyfus. Dreyfus going to pass one inside. A shot, and it's wide. Missed by Toby Lappin. So, remember, this will be about 30 seconds total of a two-man advantage, and then it'll still be, then it'll be even for, like, 20 seconds, and then a man advantage again. Looks like only a one-man advantage right now. 5v4. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, it should be a 5v4. You're right, you're right. Underhand no, shot goes over the bar. They'll have possession again. So as soon it'll be even, and then it'll be a man advantage for one yes. minute for South Portland. And we're going to have a timeout here for South Portland as this middle of the second quarter is dragging on. But still, it remains 4 nothing. We'll take a break here. We'll come back as Thornton Academy still leads 4 nothing on TATV. Hey, Dan. How's that proposal coming? Just finished. I am sending it right now. Okay, good. <laughs> How are we looking for noon? We got like two minutes. Dan. We are back here. Timeout is just about to end. So we'll give you a little recap. There's probably about five or six penalties in the last few minutes. South Florence had all the advantages. Uh, TA's been getting some, maybe some unnecessary ones, but it's still 4 nothing TA. At this moment, there are two guys in the box for TA and one for South Portland. Should be about another maybe 10 to 15 seconds for a man advantage for South Portland. Then we'll go even. and then For very briefly. For very briefly. And then uh, Lucas Melhorn will come out of the box for... Uh, South Portland, and then a one-minute man advantage. And if South Portland can't score on that, I don't know when they will score in this game because <laughs> TA has played some fantastic defense. Some missed shots, some close plays. I mean, Beckett Melhorn's gotten inside twice and just been hit almost immediately. 
Here comes Melhorn now, back at up top, long shot, and over the bar. Another missed opportunity there, and TA won the race to it. That's a big one. Looks like they're back to even now. And we'll see, ooh, bad turnover. Stolen away, now here's Beckett Melhorn. Melhorn still has it. Okay, we're now South Portland's now up a man for one minute. This one goes to now Lucas Melhorn. Melhorn taking a step back. They have a little more time now to make something happen. Four and a half minutes to go. Here's Beckett Melhorn. Beckett takes a shot, and it was wide, and they're going to have to race for it. And picking it up is Jack Dreyfus. Good defense, but Dreyfus gets the break. Gives it off to Beckett Melhorn. Melhorn takes an underhand shot wide again. South Portland just can't seem to get them. They're not getting on the cage, Zach. That's yeah. the problem. It's not a, I mean, Prince has done all right in there, but he hasn't had to make too many saves. They're just missing the ball high, wide, and side. So Dreyfus will have it. Probably about 40 seconds left on the man advantage. Dreyfus goes behind the net to Melhorn. The younger Melhorn, Beckett. Beckett gives it back out up top. Now switching it across. Here's Lucas. And T.A. is giving them no space right now. Here's Dreyfus. Dreyfus back to Beckett. They got to get one or two shots off here. Here's Cullen Adams. Now trying to turn inside. Nice move. Good defense by Adam Donovan, a sophomore. And now extra pressure coming on. And a check by Cody Ruff. And then another flag. Another flag. Now Cody Ruff's going to the box. Just as, I think it just as that one was expiring, yes. too, because I see St. John coming on now. Technical, that's only 30 seconds, so another 30 seconds man advantage. But again, if you're TA, I mean, South Portland hasn't been able to take advantage. I will say, though, like, TA is playing some spectacular defense. When, right on the edge. Without a man, yeah. yeah. When you're on the edge, you're going to have some fouls, but. So as much as this really hasn't hurt TA at all, really, in the second quarter, only impairing them from having any offensive time, the attacker's getting bored on the other end. Yeah, you, you know that uh, Coach Hersey is going to be telling his, his, uh, his players at halftime no more penalties because this is just opportunities for them. Now back up top to Cullen Adams. Lucas Melhorn almost loses it. Cody Ruff is in the box. One of the more physical players. This pass inside. Good defense. It's up in the air. Not much left in this man advantage. It's going to be T.A. ball. That's going to do it. Wow, what a what a sequence there for T.A. You know, they go, they're down probably two and a half to three minutes man advantage in South Portland does not score. And now we're back to even. Here comes Carter Gagne. There you have it. So T.A. gets out of all of those penalties. Ver Verano inside, underhand <laughs> score. I mean, he just, it's Jacob just so predictable. Marcotte. It's so predictable. You, you know, it happens in hockey. It happens in lacrosse. You Kill off a ton of penalties and you come back down to score almost immediately. Number two for Marcotte and the assist from Noah Verano and TA endured all of that defense to just score again. It's now 5 nothing. South Portland looking for some answers. We've got three minutes and about two seconds in the clock. And when I look back at this game, it's going to be the turnovers, the unforced turnovers, and then just the, just the shooting prowess, not getting the ball on the cage enough especially with those man advantages. A very different story than, than the game in South Portland at the beginning of the season. Now we'll see some, some sub changes here as picking up will be Finn O'Donnell for South Portland. O'Donnell long pass. Beckett Melhorn has it. And Melhorn now trying to get around Mason Pollen. Melhorn to Dreyfus. Dreyfus back to Melhorn. And now they're going to take their time here. Now they definitely need a goal. Can't go into halftime without anything. No. Sub comes on. Here's Toby Lappin, who has probably the closest shot on the day. I don't know if that one has a shot on goal yet. They have one or two that's been a decent save by Parento, but it's been mostly not on target. Good defense by Ethan the Blank. Back to Lappin. Now to Beckett Melhorn. Malhorn trying to get back up, out up top. Cody Ruff pushing to the side. Stolen away. A turnover there by Beckett Melhorn. And now Ethan LeBlanc turning on the Jets and getting by South Portland. LeBlanc, short pass to Verano. Verano going around the net, then cutting back. Coach Hershey's saying just hold it up. 
this point, you're up 5 nothing. Hold the ball for the last shot, maybe this half. Marcotte trying to put some spins on, but he can't get anything there. And now Cody Ruff goes back to Ethan LeBlanc. LeBlanc to Ronan Flynn and back to Ethan LeBlanc. LeBlanc then over to Lucas Hubbard. Hubbard back to LeBlanc, and now they're just playing with it. we got about a minute and a half to go. In the second quarter, TA still leads 5 nothing. Is Cody Ruff now stepping back to at the 30, 35, and just waiting, waiting for someone to check in. There's Drew Foley. Long shot by Cody Ruff. Took a chance, missed it wide. And T.O. keep possession. Jacob Marcotte now. Marcotte's got two goals in this one and an assist. He's got six points in the playoffs. The only person higher is St. John, who has now eight. A shot by Cody Ruff. Maybe might have been looking for a pass, but Q got it. And now here's Angle, slowing it down. 45 seconds, now a chance in front, and score. Nobody back, and an easy goal for number 19. That's Brady Demers. And South Portland gets on the board, and an unfortunate error there. That's uh, a breakdown from TA. Nobody around there. 5-1, you know, 5-1's not insurmountable. That's a nice goal for South Portland to get back in this one. But, I mean, you have to be able to recognize that it took TA to completely break down yeah. for South Portland to grab one. So TA's still in control of this game. Face off one and an easy pick up for St. John. A backhand pass. That was a nifty pass. Got it to LeBlanc. Now inside, Marcotte faked the shot. Tried to golf, hit it forward. Yeah. <laughs> and Q picks it up. Now gives it off another turnover. And an easy pick up there for Verano. And looks like a timeout with. Is that? 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Right I yeah. thought it said point two, and I was like, that might have been a waste of turnover there, but we'll keep it here. I'll do baseball. Again, yeah, TA leads 5 <laughs> 1. Have Christian Barrow go check the score. So Alex St. John, seven points in game one of the playoffs versus Noble. He's got two in this one, a goal and an assist. He's got nine. TA is dominating so far. We want to thank everybody who's been watching here on TA TV this season and for this game. And keep letting us know where you're watching from. I think it's 7 nothing, but it's really tough to see now the sun yeah. is out. TA is such a dominant dominant uh, team for baseball. I'm not sure. Is Cody Valker pitching? I'm not sure. To be honest, I don't think he would be after. Cause I don't think – I think he pitched in, in the Biddeford game. So it would make me think that they would want to save him for uh, the final, at least the South final. Did they lose in the South final last year, or was it the state championship? I know they lost to South Portland. That's all I remember. Because I ended and up that going. Been, that would have been in the regional. Yeah, I went to uh, I went to St. Joe's to watch yep. that game. That was that was a good one. But with 20 seconds left, TA takes the timeout just to kind of get their team back in it, and I think they have possession. Around the 40 yard line. Team might be able to get one one more chance off. We've seen them score without like 11 seconds left. That game versus Cape Elizabeth. And Ethan the Blank, who scored that goal, has it now. We'll see if the Blank tries to rush in or if he'll just wait off. And now here comes the Blank quickly. The Blank goes to. Marcotte, down to Flynn. And we are down to 10 seconds. Marcotte now going to try to rush in. Marcotte inside, nice pass, and a goal. And that's one you just can't give away for South Portland. Good pass inside. Alex St. John, another goal. He now has seven goals in the playoffs. And a beautiful passing play. Jacob Marcotte grabs and assists. 
And Thorn Academy now has taken a six to one lead as halftime is about five seconds away. Marcotte's got four points in the game. St. John with three. And the faceoff is fought for, but that'll do it for the first half. Thorn Academy grabs a late goal. They go up by five. It is six to one. We'll take a break here on Tate TV. Be back to some halftime thoughts and the rest of the second half of this boys Class A South semifinal lacrosse game.
We are back here in uh, what still seems to be about two minutes up to halftime, and both teams are warming up here. And I'm Zach Jarenko here with Jeff Christianberry on TA TV, bringing you some Class A South semifinal boys cross matchup. Number two TA and number three South Portland. First half was a crazy one. TA leads six to one. There was about four or five minutes there in the second uh, second quarter with like maybe six or seven penalties, and TA got out of it and scored a goal. They lead six to one. And they are dominating right now in the game. Alex St. John has two goals and an assist. Jacob Mark has two goals and two assists. Ronan Flynn has added a goal. And Jackson DeLeo got his first to the playoffs. And TH is holding this one over South Portland. Jeff, what does South Portland have to do to get back in this game? And what should TA do if they want to just hold this one off and, and move on to the, the final next week? I mean, TA, if you're them, you just like continue exactly what you've been doing. If you're South Portland, you need a lot to go right. You need to, first of all, stop turning the ball over. you got to start scoring. you got to hit in a cage and hope TA doesn't score. I mean, that's what happens when you get to, when you put yourself in a big hole by five goals. It's not – it's like, oh, well, we'll just start scoring. It's like, well, okay, but you, all, you have to score. You know, outscore TA by six goals here in this half. And then, yeah. And, and then I hope they don't score, yep. like, very much. I mean, if TA gets up ten goals, I don't see South Portland scoring 11, you know, ten goals in this half. Mm -hmm. I mean, something would have to – you know, really happen here. So South Portland um, will have to get off to a quick start, get a couple goals early if they want to stay in this one. Right. I personally don't see it happening, but anything can happen. Yep. I uh, did see, you know, baseball 6 nothing is the last time we saw that it. It is Joshua Kopetsky on the mound nice. for the Trojans. So, that which I don't know how they're going to supposed to line up. You know, it all depends. Like, you know, if they, in terms of the days of rest, if they could, if they play Tuesday, they could probably throw each of those guys three innings and then st have both of them ready for the state championship game if they win that. So, yeah. um, I actually meant to look up the baseball uh, bracket, see who they could be playing in the regional final. TA is the number one seed, but that is at a neutral site, St. Joe's. Want to thank the Webb Family Law Firm for hosting our halftime show. If you have any trouble here in the in the summer season? You can always call the great people out at the Web Family Law Firm or go online at weblawmain.com. That is Web with two Bs. So to the sides again, South Portland going right to left in your screen, TA going left to right. It is South Portland. I just had it. That's who they lost to last year in the regional final. That was a great Did game. It? South Portland a good team. Let me go back here. South Portland, Portland versus Falmouth. Is the other one. And what, what do you know what the seeding is for that game? That's 2-3. 2-3. So they'll be playing a, a top team. So South Portland 2 and Falmouth 3? Or the other way around? Geez, I can make me go back and <laughs> look at it. Does it really matter? They're, they're playing at a neutral site. 3 South Portland, 2 Falmouth. Oh, you're right. It doesn't matter because TA is number one. So That's true. You're right. It doesn't matter either because they're playing at a neutral site, right, so it's not like we're right. hosting anyway. But. Well, thank you for the information. Well, I appreciate it always. So it's out of bounds. Diving for it was... Verano. I think the crowd wants a white, but they are biased. <laughs> it's actually a pretty decent crowd here, as well as for South Portland on the right side of the stadium. And they're going to give it to TA. A good job by Verano for the dive. Nice move by Verano. And that pass to Marco was just too far. And they'll be out of bounds, and it'll now be South Portland ball. Here now is number 23, this is Caleb Jewers. And he's checked, no call. And now here comes Flynn, Flynn one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, nice goal. Stutter step kind of move, Flynn grabs his second. South Portland a little frustrated, thought maybe there was some kind of check call there, nothing. Ronan Flynn gets number seven for Thorne Academy and Flynn's second of the game. TA extends their lead now to six. Easy stuff. Turnover turns into uh, a goal. It's, it's a simple equation to figure out. Call going to go up against Drew Folly. Cole trying to pick it up, and St. John thought he had it, goes forward. Now picking it up is South Portland's only goal scorer, number 19, Brady Demers. Demers gets it to Colin Banks. There's Colin Banks to Colin Adams, and then now to Dreyfus. Colin Adams right up top. 
to Lucas Melhorn. Was thinking about a shot. Long pass and just wide. Another turnover. Just unfortunate for South Portland. Can't seem to get anything going when they're on offense. Just giving the ball away. So ja Jacob Rental will take it out. And just under 11 minutes to go in the third quarter. That pass finds Mason Pollen. They're trying to look for a call. As he lost a stick there. And I think he's got his shirt pulled, but he has possession, so I think they're going to let it go. Verano has it. Verano, Cameron Raymond was coming in for a cut. Now gets it to Hubbard. Now back to Verano. Good turn by Ronan Flynn. Flynn thought about a shot, but didn't have the right angle. Now LeBlanc has it for the Trojans. Here's... Cameron Raymond over to Hubbard. Hubbard then over to Marcotte. Then back to Hubbard and switching it back to top again to Raymond. Now T.A. just trying to find that right angle. Looking for a cut inside. He gives it back to Raymond. Raymond to Hubbard. Hubbard trying to get inside. And Hubbard is going to try to wrap around. He couldn't find anything. LeBlanc fumbled it there, but he still has it. Try to give it back. Hubbard, good job with the pickup there. South Portland trying to be aggressive, but TA's holding on to possession now. LeBlanc will step back and try to reset. And here is Ethan LeBlanc now near the 40 yard line. LeBlanc will run up. LeBlanc. Ooh, bad turnover. Turnover there. Now picked up quickly by Brady Angle, fighting for it. And it goes right back to Thorne Academy. So here's Ronan Flynn. Flynn to Cameron Raymond. And Jackson DeLeo checks back into the game. DeLeo to Hubbard. Hubbard. Getting it back to DeLeo. Mishandled. And St. John tapped it forward. Back to DeLeo. Nice play by Alex St. John. Quibildo back on the field. Bildo. Now I'm going to go back near the end zone. All the way to Jackson DeLeo. And T.A. slowing it down now. 8.15 to go in the third quarter. Nice move by Jackson DeLeo. DeLeo hit hard. A long shot by Verano is wide. Leo's helmet got I think messed up a little bit. Good job by Ronan Flynn there to help him out with that. Now Flynn trying to spin inside. Nice move by Ronan Flynn. Flynn fighting the pressure behind uh -huh. the back shot just wide. You can do that when you're up 7-1, I guess. Yeah. Almost scored that one. That would have been fantastic. This one's now back to Marka and Cameron Raymond. Again, TNL has had possession for at least the last two minutes. Flynn then to Marcotte. Marcotte then back to Jackson DeLeo. And TA's just taking their time now. It's one thing I'm surprised. You know, we have a ball boy kind of behind the play here. He's dressed in white, and it looks a lot like a player. Surprised South Portland hasn't said something about that. Just all it takes a little bit out of the corner of your eye to think there's someone back there. Yeah. That one's an underhand low shot by Flynn. It's wide, and St. John taps it back. And try to get it wouldn't wouldn't go, and so it'll be a pickup for Cullen Adams on the close side of the field. Adams. Of course, these two teams, Zach, had uh, you know you don't may not remember, but back you know five six years ago, these two teams were battling every single year in these regional semis and finals, and very close matchups. South Portland won just as much as TA did. Right now, these two teams don't, definitely don't look as close as they have in the past. Here's Carter Gagne fighting through it, but lost control of the ball. Now Verano has it, and he almost lost control of it, but he has some space to pick it up. And Carter Gagne will check off, and Ethan the blank back in the game. St. John will take a seat as well. Marcotte spinning around Finn O'Donnell. Go 
Cody Ruff. Good move. Now Ruff with some space. Ruff puts a shot on and just wide. And the run for it is won by... I think Ben, I think ben Q got it. He did. In time. So South Portland needs to get something going. Down by six. About six and a half to go in the third quarter. Here comes South Portland. Slowing it down is Brady Frank. Frank over to Finn O'Donnell. Nice turn by Finn O'Donnell. Gets the pressure. Now a backhand pass and a turnover. That's just not something you want to happen there. Now here comes Hayden Whitney. Whitney the pass inside to Marcotte. Nice pass by Hayden Whitney. Jacob Marcotte's got the hat trick and now five points in this game. Great pass from Hayden Whitney, great takeaway. That's happened twice where a long stick defender has taken it away and South Portland does not know what to do now. Down eight to one. Yeah, they give up those turnovers. There's a lot of hanging heads there in the South Portland sideline. They know this one is a wrap, as they say. So some time left, but really just a one big defensive breakdown by Thornton Academy is the only way that South Portland has scored in this game. I don't see them do that happening more than maybe once more. And Tia can start looking forward to a potential matchup against Cape Elizabeth here in a few days. Again, Cape still has to win their game today. They play at 3 o'clock. Big favorites, though, in that one. And, of course, that game would be at Cape Elizabeth. Date and time to be determined. Ball goes back out to Bo Preston. Now Cameron Raymond. Ethan McLean checks into the game or Marcotte, who has five points in this one. Been a pretty clean game, Zach. Besides that one period in the middle of the second quarter, there's like five penalties in a matter of two minutes. We have a timeout here. We'll take it to Thornton Academy up 8-1 here in the third quarter in total control in this Class A South semifinal. Hey, Dan. How's that proposal coming? Just finished. I am sending it right now. OK, good. <laughs> How are we looking for noon? We got like two minutes. Dan. We are back here with just about five minutes to go in the third quarter. TA leads 8-1. to one. South Portland trying to find some momentum right now. Give a little quick check-in on the baseball game. It is now 7 nothing. A From what I heard, it is a bad pitch uh, by Marshwood, and TA was able to steal home, so pretty cool there. 7 nothing. I think they're in the fifth inning, and now a goal scored right off the bat. There is that a, happen? Uh, again, number 19, Brady Demers, and it's just been two kind of really big breakdowns for TA. It's weird. It's just weird. Yeah. I mean, there's no defender within 20 yards of him there. So I don't know, Coach Coach Hershey wasn't happy after that. Some kind of breakdown, but either way. And that's what happened the last time. I didn't really see how it happened when there was that total breakdown in the in the second when they scored. So there's just nobody there. Maybe a guy's kind of hiding on the side of the field, kind of ran in. and. Maybe. Or just a really great pass. Who knows? South Portland right back in this one. It's 8-2. to two. Certainly can't let that stuff happen when you play Cape again. Now here's Finn O'Donnell. South Portland now a little bit of surge here. O'Donnell now in the corner with nothing to do. He's checked hard. It'll be T.A. Ball. Long pass from St. John. 
too far for both players. But a great pickup by Flynn. Flynn now with some space. Flynn's going to take a shot. Good save by Ben Q. Q got it right in the pocket of his stick. Great save. Now here comes South Portland. Inside, good pass to Jamie Center. That one goes a little too wide, and St. John quickly grabs it there. St. John to Raymond. And now Raymond's going to take it out. Raymond a long pass. Raymond avoids a check from Brady Frank. Now Coach Hersey, you know, this game's well in hand. You know, not anything can happen, but you, what you don't want is to get these bad habits. You don't want the guys to get a little bit, still the third quarter, don't want to get a little bit lazy out there and get some bad habits because, again, you, you, against Cape, if you do one of these, some of these mistakes, you're going to get burned. Colin Adams finds Dreyfus. Now Dreyfus with some space. Dreyfus to pass inside to Lucas Melhorn. Now a third one, a late check. Ooh, he did this push up on the ground too. And the South Portland coach is trying to get a call after a big check on Demers, who now has three goals. And we talked about him being a consistent scorer for this team. He's got a hat trick. And South Portland coach not happy with that one. I'll be honest, that was a hit after the shot, but I think I think he was running inside, so you have to you know, believe that, that something like that's going to happen. No call by the referee. And now they're going to have to go talk to him. So it's now 8-3. to three. couple quick goals there. Just about un just under four minutes. South Portland coach really needs something like that. He's a little frustrated. And now the referee's conferring a little bit as well. So maybe they might change the call. I'm not really sure. Ryan Hersey does not seem to be looking for an answer. So... And let's say nothing's changing. So face off at midfield. So Portland making it a little bit interesting here. They really need to score two or three more goals in a row, I would say, to make it game on. But here comes CA. Here comes St. John now. And now South Portland in pursuit. Here is Heath McLean. Back to Bo Preston. Went down on one knee to get that one. Here's Hubbard and Kobe Bilodeau on for Thorn Academy. Bilodeau trying to wrap around. Gives it off to Preston. Now there's Marcon who gives it off at the top to Hubbard. Now here comes Kobe Bilodeau. Bilodeau to Heath McLean. McLean to Bilodeau. Takes a pass, gives it to McLean. McLean lost control of it. But a good pickup by Verano. Verano, they're going to see who can pick it up. It's South Portland. Oh, my goodness. Gave it to Q, and in Oof. front was Marcotte, who ah. almost got a piece of that one. And oh. now Ben Q will take it out. Gives it to Caleb Jewers. Jewers with some speed. Jewers now running up. Jewers lost control. He held it just a little too long. And a flag. Good man advantage here for South Portland. I'm not sure. It might be a technical. Or it might be a one minute for a hold. We'll see. But down by five with the two and a half to go. One minute. And man that's advantage. That's going to be on. See who's taking a knee here. Hayden Whitney. It's actually a little bit outside of the box, but. Oh, they told him to get. He said you get up in the front. <laughs> so Whitney gets, I believe, a hold for one minute, and now a man advantage for South Portland, trying to get back in this one. Down by five. Here's Lucas Melhorn, out up top, switching it around to Toby Lappin, trying to get a pass inside. Beckett Melhorn oh, thinking him. about a shot. He had him. And now a uh, mistake there, violation. It'll be TA possession. Trying to move it forward is Carter Gagne. Now Gagne with speed. Gagne lost it, and that's a unfortunate turnover. Totally faked me out there. I thought they're still back in the backfield. Oh my gosh! 
Beckett Melhorn goes down, and now going to figure it out. Oh, so blue, I didn't see a point anywhere, though. DeLeo fell, and then Beckett Melhorn tripped over him. I mean, might be an accidental call. I don't know. I don't think it happened on purpose. That's why they may not figure out something. Referee's conversing a little bit more here. Kyle Lister checks back in. So far, they'll keep possession, it looks like. Still probably about 30 seconds left on the penalty. The man advantage, I should say. That pass gets inside. Now looking for Beckett Melhorn. Melhorn lost control of it, and a shot scores. It found its way out in front to Toby Lappin. And now here comes South Portland. They were down 8-1, now it's 8-4. With just under two minutes to go in the third quarter, TA letting up a little bit, and South Portland taking that space. Talk about this in sports, you can't give them inches because sometimes teams will take a mile. Uh, it all, all stemmed this this little uh, spurt. I'm going to say comeback. Yeah, it all stemmed from that just inexplicable defensive breakdown off a timeout. Thornton Academy up 8-1, and there was nobody within 10 yards, 15 yards of a South Portland attacker put an easy goal in and made it 8-2, gave him some life. South Portland now trying to bring some energy and momentum as Mishu wins the faceoff. Mishu loses it and try to tap it back. An easy pickup. Lost it was Drew Foley. Winnie trying to grab it. And now there's Pollen, but Pollen loses it in a turnover. And here's Brady Frank. Frank oh. then gives it away. Jeez. That's something South Portland can't do. Here's Mason Pollen now. T.A. really needs to try to get a good possession off before the end of the third quarter. And now St. John with speed. Draper's not even gonna try it. Here's St. John, St. John inside. Cody Ruff, Ruff takes a shot, and he scores. Cody Ruff on a long shot, and just cuts all the momentum they had. Cody Ruff, his first playoff point. He got a goal, and TA now leads nine to four. Good job by Cody Ruff. Just a backbreaking turnover there from South Portland, and it's kind of the story of the game for them and why they got down eight to one. They had they had possession nice and clean and just gave it away. And Tia comes down thanks to St. John with a great run and a little more breathing room here. The minute just over a minute to go in the third. Let's drive for Cody Ruff. Tia's definitely had some advantages on the faceoffs. Look at I win a faceoff. It's like Hayden and Whitney will come out with it. Good job by Whitney. Whitney evades two checks and a flag called as well. And then an underhand shot, no good. TA doesn't let up though, so they still have possession. And maybe one more chance. He's in the blankets, checked again, he loses it. And picked up there, so Hayden Whitney evades two checks and then, grab, and then is able to draw a penalty. The slash. Maybe even a hold. We'll have to see what they call. One minute penalty. Yep. So with 47 seconds left, T will be on the man advantage. And they will be looking to hit double digits. It's nine to four. And here we go, picking it up now on the far side is now it's with St. John. St. John trying to get inside, nice pass. Turning off, oh, Raymond's wide. Last second. Here's Flynn now with it. Flynn, Marcot lost control, still has it. Now behind the net, we've hit under 20 seconds. Raymond fakes a shot. It's rolling and Marcot saved it. Ooh. We're down to seven seconds. St. John, right up top, they gotta shoot. Three seconds, and now looking for a shot. Scores! Oh no, it's a save. That time's expired. They're gonna talk, this may have gone through the net. 
Looks like a goal to me, but. I'm not sure that. It looked like it went in the way it hit the net. It might have hit the outside, though. What? I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> no, 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 that means. Maybe they're, they're saying they're going to think about it? I think I'm it's the end of the quarter. Yeah. Well, that'll do it for the third quarter. We will uh, we'll keep an eye on this, but we'll take a break here on TATV. Be back for the fourth quarter. We are back here, and that goal, I think, is going to count as nothing. Nothing. Seem to hit the outside of the net, and uh, it's still 9-4. to T leads by 5. 12 minutes of, ga of game to go. We want to thank everyone again for watching this game and all of our broadcasts this year. This looks like most likely. I mean, I know Cape Elizabeth. I know Sa uh, Scarborough. I've looked at, seen those teams play. Um, it looks like it's going to be the last one of the year, which is sad, but I'm excited for next year. I know we're going to have some great fall sports. Football may not have the same team, but they still have a great program. That'll be a good fun one to watch, as well as the winter season as the boys and girls basketball teams and hockey team look great as well. So I'm excited for senior year. Uh, but we still have 12 more minutes of this game. You never Baseball, know. Baseball's up 7 nothing in the, the other game. I heard from Michael Hoff with the forecasters. 3-3 between Falmouth and... South Portland. South Portland. Yep. And the winner of that game plays Thornton Academy, looks like, in the regional final. Long shot. Good save there by Q. He's had a couple of good saves here in the second half, keeping South Portland in it. Now here's Demers, who has a hat trick. Colin Adams loses it and gives it over to center. Beckett Melhorn. South Portland needs to get something here. Beckett Melhorn will go into the corner with it and will take two defenders. And gives it back to Dreyfus. Dreyfus with some space. Nice fake. Dreyfus gets through, and the shot is wide. He needed that one. They need some goals in a hurry here. You know, they, if they can get it back within one or two with a couple minutes to go, then it's anybody's game. But they'll need to get, you know, two or three to get to that mark. Here's Dreyfus fighting through a check from Whitney, who's had a great defensive day. Also has an assist. Good work by Whitney, forces a, uh, a loss of the ball, but Beckett Melhorn picks it up, and Melhorn now behind the net, going to try to get something going. Nice move by Melhorn. Melhorn fighting through a check. Melhorn gives it off to his older brother, Lucas. Now here's Colin Adams getting through the pass inside, shoots and scores. And again, it's Demers. Demers has four goals, and he's helped South Portland get back in this one. It's now 9-5. to five. They are not giving up. We'll have another face off at midfield. So South Portland getting right back in this one. Still a four goal lead for Thorne Academy, but lots of time on the clock. 10.46 to go in the fourth quarter. It is not over just yet, folks. Face off will come between Frank. I'm not worried yet. If you're a TA fan, I mean. Certainly, I didn't see them scoring this many goals, but if they get to like 9-7, then, then it's worry time. But here comes TA. Marcotte to Flynn. Flynn, good cut to the middle, and a good save. If they somehow come back, Q is, needs a lot of recognition. He's had some yeah. great saves just to keep it to nine. Colin Banks has it. Banks got oh, it inside so of Foley. So ambitious. And turned it over, and he tried to pick it up, and he lost his stick. And now St. John is gone. That's why St. John is a good player. St. John to Hubbard. Hubbard cuts back. 
and he hands it over. And now Hubbard slowing it down. They got to waste out time. They might pull what we might have seen in the uh, TA girls to cross his Falmouth game where they just kind of wait it off. Morgan Bullock wasted like I think three minutes by herself just running around in circles. We're under 10 to go. Jackson DeLeo near midfield. DeLeo trying to get by the defender. To Flynn. Flynn now with some space. Flynn, good move. And he scores. South Portland's defense nowhere to be found. And Ronan Flynn grabs goal number three. He's got a hat trick, and the game is now 10 to 5. Every time South Portland starts to get closer and closer, he adds another one to their lead. It's now 10 to 5. Yeah, they just can't get within that four goal mark, or the three goal mark, I guess. Big, big response here from TA back in control. Under 10 minutes to go. Face off will come between, between Frank and Mishu. So that Portland needs a goal right now if they want to get back in this one. Finding four, nice pickup by Colin Adams, and Adams is now is gone. Beckett Melhorn inside, Dreyfus mishandled, and St. John. A quick <laughs> pickup and a huge check. Oh, it's gonna be called a. It's gonna be called a penalty. And this could get pretty ugly here. So Portland coach is not happy. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't. Can you call that a penalty? I guess you can. I'm not. I'm. I, I, that, that I. I just I don't, don't see think. Anything wrong with that. I just don't think that's gonna be a penalty because. No, they're calling it a penalty for sure. Are they? Like, so Portland know. calling it like dirty or ejectable. I mean, that's just, no. No. I mean, the, the South Portland guy went into him, stuck his head into a, to the rat's nest. You can see get... St. John put his shoulder out for that one, but right. I I feel like with the ball, it shouldn't be anything more than maybe at two minutes. Let's see, what, let's see what the ref says. Two minutes. I think, I think that other symbol means unreleasable. Pretty sure. St. John frustrated, and the fans are frustrated as well. I think South Portland's looking for something bigger. Met, but, you know, good thing is, is Beckett Melhorn's okay. Yeah, you know, that, that's the, that's the first thing. Right up. Oh, let's see this. What's going on here? Oh, being a tough guy over here on the South Portland sideline. Going to talk to the coaches. Yeah. That's always – that's <laughs> that's why lacrosse gets a little bit of a bad rap. Sometimes they – Coaches are more of a, the stars than the players. I will say, though, one of the assistant coaches for South Porn is, uh, I believe, uh, Beckett Melhorn's father, Cooper Melhorn. So maybe that's uh, who that is. I'm not sure. Either way, it's a two-minute man advantage. I believe unreleasable. South Porn frustrated with that call. We'll see if they can take advantage. You know, regardless, they should. If, you know, if they want to pull this off, they need to get two or three goals here. I'm not sure what the problem is. I'm not sure what Coach Hersey is frustrated by. We have nine and a half to go. Ten to five. St. John will have two minutes in the box. His second. Penalty in the game for two minutes. We gotta get this game going here, I mean. And Melhorn will check off. Yeah, I think I think the part of it was like they, they say he had to come off for at least a minute because he was the one that was injured. He comes right back on, but all right. So two minutes here for South Portland to try to really get back in this game. Unreleasable penalty. Dreyfus over to Colin Adams. They got two minutes; they can take their time, but I don't know if they want to do that here. Still down by five goals. The ball bounces to Dreyfus. Dreyfus almost lost it. He saves it before it goes out of bounds. Dreyfus gives it over to Beckett Melhorn. Melhorn a behind the back shot, no good from Demers. If you're South Portland, you just got to pepper this net. I mean, you have to get some shots on. You got to get two or three goals here. This is your chance. This is your chance to get back in it with an unreleasable penalty. Long shot from Colin Adams scores. Nice shot from Colin Adams. 
It's 10 to six, and now here comes South Portland. So yeah, unreleasable penalties, so, and that happened just about 40 or 45 seconds after the penalty, so still a lot of time left. It is 10 to six, 8.50 to go in the fourth quarter. Face off will come between Finn O'Donnell, I believe. Max be Frank. Yep, that is Frank. Against Mishu. Huge face off win here for South Portland if they can keep it, I should say. Frank gets it forward to Cullen Adams, who just scored the goal. Adams to Beckett Melhorn. Melhorn to Dreyfus. Nice pass inside. And oh, a what a save. Save of the game. Right in front on Demers. Timeout TA. Timeout call. What a save by Parento. I mean, that would have that been the moment to get to get them within three, and then it's really game on. Yeah. I mean, first off, great passing from uh, South Portland to get it inside to Demers, but just too far on the on the pullback and gave Parento time to get in front of it. What a save there by Parento. I think the penalty still is in effect. Yeah, for at least another minute. I'm going to go run and see what the score is. Yeah. Are you good? We are back here. We've got 8.28 to go. So Porn still has a man advantage here, and they are looking to get within one more. It's 10 to 6. What does South Porn need to do on offense to get back in this game, Jeff? Uh, they need to score. <laughs> no, they just got to not turn over. They got to play almost perfect here. I mean, yes, they're, down, they're, they're close the gap to four. They got to get this ball back almost immediately and take advantage of their man advantage, and they do. They give it away. Here comes South Portland. They give it right back. I mean, here's, time after time after time. Here's Hubbard. Hubbard got hit in the face. No call. Just trying to waste as much as this penalty as possible. Man advantage. And a two-minute unreleasable. Hey, it's a penalty. And South Portland gives it right back. And their coach takes his hat off and in a, disgust. And another hit on Hubbard. And there's another, another one. Another penalty. South Portland's lost control right now. They're like. giving up right. Not too good of penalties there. And TA's excited. Yeah, because TA may actually have a man advantage right now after all that. So St. John's still in the box, but probably for not much longer. Both flags were thrown. First one was for, I believe, a technical on Hubbard. The second one was just for Only unnecessary hit. Yep. hit or push, I should say, with his hand. Get two guys in the box now for South Portland, just one for TA. And number 12 is going to want that back. Got That's a 30-second penalty for the first one. One no. minute for unsportsmanlike conduct. South so Portland coach not happy, but I don't know what you're arguing with. I mean, he he's clearly saying, hits him after. He was like he was uh, chirped at or whatever, but, uh, you know. All right. South Portland coaches, again, just – Making it, making it about them. Let's yeah. just say that. They're making it about them and 
trying to justify why their team has turned the ball over a bazillion times here when they've had a chance to. Looking like the know. Celtics. Yeah, exactly. Although they, it wasn't that bad. I mean, y game four was a really close game, and the Celtics played well. I just gave a little run there at the end, and they couldn't get back into it. So. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen in that series. You know, it's game five is going to be anyway. huge. Game five oh, is the yeah, biggest massive. game. Yep. I still think it's more important for the Warriors to win if they want to. You know what I mean? If you're a Warriors fan, you need to win game five. I don't think the Warriors can win two in a row against the Celtics. I think the Celtics could yeah. win two in a row. I think the Celtics could lose. Though they haven't lost two in a row all postseason either. Well, yeah. So. Uh, the thing about the Celtics not losing two in a row, I think it's like some people might think it's just a coincidence. It's not. Like they just they they answer, they respond. So we'll see where that goes. Are they? Are, I think we're just waiting for. No, no, they're they're in play now. They're just wasting the time. T8 has no no interest in pushing it. They're just gonna wait their thirty second advantage. Wait for St. John to get out of there, and now here comes Jamie Center, Jamie Centor. Back to the blank. So I think we're even now. Uh, now we're not. Now T8 will have an advantage because Alex St. John's back and. So Portland did score one goal on that man advantage, but that's it. Ten to six, and St. John's got the short stick. He's ready to play. St. John looking for his third goal of the game. He's got a chance there. Nice pass inside. LeBlanc turning. Can't get a shot off. It's on the ground, and they're just trying to stick it forward. Coming out with it. Good pressure. And now it's going to be South Portland's possession. So South Portland's down a man right now, but not for too long. Stolen away. St. John. Hit oh. the cro I think it might hit the crossbar. Post. I think, I think the it's post. definitely the left post, yeah. yeah. That was a low shot. St. John picks it up. He's going to play it now. St. John walking in. Fakes. Finds his, his teammate. And hit the crossbar. was Verano. Two bars in a row. And South Portland now taking it out. And here comes number eight. This is Colin Banks. Banks throws it away. Yeah, so Portland again just turning the ball over in the midfield, and they have not got within three goals since it was 3 nothing. St. John and Verano are going to want those ones back. Just hit the bar twice. Here comes T.A., and we've gotten to under six and a half. Game getting stretched right now, and that helps Thornton Academy. Long shot score. There That's it the is. That's backbreaker right there. That's Noah. Verano, and here is the uh, the celebration on the sideline. The oh, I missed it. Sorry the, about that. The, the rowboat. The rowboat, yep. yep. And Noah Verano grabs a goal. He's got uh, an assist as well in this game, and it is now 11-6. to six. That should be the nail in the coffin yeah. here. Yeah. Unless something big happens. So get a little excited, Amy. We're glad. It was 8-1 here in the middle of the third quarter. It didn't look like it was going to be a very exciting ending. Certainly a long game, but... Which is not happy with uh, one of his own players in South Portland, number eight, coming off the field. Looking to see who's going to win the faceoff. Cole Mishu has it. Mishu finds the pass to Marcotte, who's got a hat trick in this game. Back to Noah Verano. Verano to Nick DeLeo coming on, and now Bo Preston as well. Just a waiting game, at least for TA now. No reason to rush anything. Up by five goals with. Five minutes to go, roughly. Here's Flynn. Flynn with speed. He's going to shoot and a good save. I almost want to give Q the player of the game, even though he's given yeah, up he's 11 had goals. Some, some great I mean, saves. He's been a beast in that net for South Portland. And not just blocks, too. Like, he's getting his stick in the right spot and making the saves in the yeah. pocket of his stick. Nice pass to Dreyfus. I mean, he's a big dude. He is agile. I'm impressed with him. That pass is too far for Dreyfus, but South Portland has possession. Down by five, with five and a half to go. I don't want to call this one over yet because we've seen a lot happen in, in a short amount of time, but the way TA is playing, the way South Portland's playing, it looks like TA's got just this game in the palm of their hand. Yeah, Red Reds definitely had some chances here in the second half. Yeah. The two-man advantage, getting the one goal, that was it. That we, was their chance. And we talked about it. That saved by Parento saved. in that front. Was, that was... It would have been a three-goal game at yep. that point, but still a minute and a half or so left on the two-man advantage. Or man, man advantage, excuse me. Good move there and a goal by Lucas Melhorn. I think it got blocked. May have gotten tipped in front. 
So Lucas Melhorn grabs a goal. It's now 11-7. So well, they need a goal a minute, basically. Yeah. It's doable, but five. The, four. Uh, the thing is, right now, again, this is this is where South Portland got to eight to four. They got to nine to five. They got to ten to ten to six. And now 11-7. They keep getting that four-goal yep. deficit, and that's when Thornton Academy kind of puts a little bit more insurance on the board. So huge face-off right here coming up. It'll be between Frank and Mishu. If South Portland can grab it and maybe get a goal here, this is going to bring it back close. Fighting for it, Cole is trying to get the break. He does. Good job. That's why Cole Mishu's one of the best face-off guys in lacrosse. That's a chase game for South Portland. You got to hope Thornton Academy makes a mistake. Good move by Verano. And takes a shot and another save by Q. Not sure that's the best idea right there from Verano. Keep that ball. Keep that possession. Waste another minute off the clock. Now you give South Portland the chance to get within three, but they lose it in the midfield yet again. Oh, no. It's going to be. They called a timeout, I think, before he lost it. Okay. We'll keep it right here. That was, I mean, if he did get it off in time, that's, uh, that's a good call by the coach. Because that would have been just a, a, a terrible turnover as they were trying to get up the field. So they need four goals. We got four and a half minutes. I'll check baseball this time. This game's got to be just about over. Yeah, they were in the seventh, I think, the last time I checked. So, Well, give a one more shout-out to everybody here. Thank our sponsors, P&C Insurance, Suck for Savings. Thank the Web Family Law Firm. They're going to host our post-game show just in a few minutes. You can always go online at weblawmain.com if you want to check that out. Check them out at... Uh, again, weblawmain.com. That's web with two Bs. Again, it's most likely our last broadcast of the year. And some updates on the other TA sports. So baseball, is it a win? Is it over? It's over. It's over. Was, so, yeah, baseball wins. I think they got another shutout, which uh, from what I've heard. I think it's their 12th of the 12th year. 12th shutout of the year. which Double, is Twice more than any they've ever had, according to Gary Stevens. I think their record was six. Softball, unfortunately, fell out Wind Windham yesterday in the semifinals. And the girls lacrosse team lost to Cape Elizabeth. Uh, they got upset by Cape Elizabeth here. That was last week in the quarterfinals. So uh, it is um, unfortunate we only have two teams left, but we got two great teams, boys across and baseball. Four and a half to go. And South Portland will have the ball at midfield, and they're going to need one now. We'll check the players on the field. So it looks like Carter Gagne is out there, Cody Ruff. Kyle Lasur, Lappin, tried to find Colin Adams. He lost control of it. Dreyfus, good pickup. Dreyfus, a flag called, and Beckett scores. Beckett, excuse me, that is uh, Melhorn, and I'm not sure if this is similar to other sports where if a penalty is called, the penalty gets canceled. I would, canceled. I would it gets assume. Either way, it's a three-goal game. They finally kind of get into that three-goal margin. Nice goal by Beckett Melhorn on an odd angle. I don't know. Are they still going to call a penalty? Let's see. Either way, like, you know, Third Academy's still in good shape here. It's just not a great. I mean, up 8-1, middle of third, and then just have kind of they took the foot off the gas. And they, Yeah, they're still going to call it. One minute on first slash on Alex St. John, who now has grabbed... Another penalty. Yeah, he's got five minutes of penalties in this game. That's a lot more than he's had all year. I have a feeling he may be out of the game now. I think you can only have a certain amount of penalties, and he's out now. He is not in the box. He's taking off all his gear. He looks a little frustrated. And he's going to stand by himself a little bit on the far side. Yeah, we're not sure exactly the rule there, but it looks like he is done. That is not good for TA. That's basically their top defenseman. Yeah, I think that's going to be it for Alex St. John. Not good for T.A. And the man advantage still. One so. minute man advantage. I'm surprised no one else has to sit in the box. but On the ground fighting for it. And Huge. a good pickup by Hayden Whitney. Whitney looking for a pass. He lost it. There's a turnover. For sure she was telling him to slow down with it. T.A. fighting for it. Good pickup by LeBlanc. LeBlanc now with some speed getting into the zone. We're down to under four minutes. Uh, South Portland has to be super aggressive here, and that's going to be a penalty, and they're going to give it right away. And that should be a, a, a second that, foul. because That he is not. He whacked uh, at him after the play. That is 
Not going to be a good one. Number one might be gone. Just uh, not a good play. The, b the first play was not good. I mean, you have to be super aggressive. I get that. But you give up your man advantage now. They're talking about it. So that, that second one, I, I was – Well, it's he, tough. I don't, it's tough from this angle, though, how close did he get to the actual player. I don't know yeah. if he was just whacking – if he's whacking at the stick, then that's just a probably a quick, you know, unsportsmanlike. He wasn't whacking at the player. It's tough to tell from this angle. They're conversing. Let's see what we got here. And one of the referees also talking to some of the players, maybe telling them just to, like, maybe cool it down a little bit, no need for this. But the can – one ref is picking up the flags. The other ref is talking to the South Portland coach. That's, I mean, I feel like any time South Portland grabs the momentum, they just seem to give it away. They, they. Well, it was a loose ball there. I had a chance on the ground to, to pick it up for sure. Yeah. I mean, they, they're taking penalties or they're giving up, you know, they're giving away turnovers or they're giving up, you know, goals they shouldn't be giving up. So, Finn O'Donnell is the guy there. What's the call? I'm not really sure. So Hubbard seems to be taking a seat for St. John. Okay, so he's got a minute and a half in the box now. So the 30 for square. the technical and one for the unsportsmanlike. Right. Yep. All right. So it'll be even now for God, I don't know, 30 seconds maybe. And then Thornton Academy have a one-minute man advantage which will get us just under two minutes, or almost to the two-minute mark, basically. So brought it back within three, took an unnecessary penalty, and now I don't know what T's going to do with it with three and a half to go. You want to waste it as much as you can here. Almost, you don't give it away. Almost mishandled. Good job by Flynn. Flynn taking checks, and he moves out of it. And I mean, now Mark... So Portland has to be over-aggressive here. I mean, at this point, you're down by three. You have to sell out a little bit. Marcotte speeding around, and that's why he's such a great player. He's so quick, and he's just running around by himself with the ball. He's holding the stick in a position where he's not looking to pass it. He's just running around, and the fans seem to enjoy it. Marcotte getting big checks. Finds a pass inside. Flynn turns and scores, and that's the killer. Marcotte finds Flynn. Flynn grabs number four. Marcotte grabs... His sixth point. He's got three goals and three assists. And there it is. 12 to 8. And that should be that. The penalty on uh, St. John might be over now. I believe it should be over because there's only one minute. Yeah. Every, I think all penalties are even. I think we're back to even now. Down by four. There's still three minutes and 13 seconds. <laughs> it's been the longest second half of all time, I think. This game started at... 11. It's almost two hours here, but the first quarter was almost nothing. It was like no no stoppages and hardly any goals and since then. It was only 5-1 at halftime. Six yeah. points, sorry. She's actually lost scoring on this end. It's 7-5. Oh, uh, yeah. Remember, it's 8-1 at one point, so... Brought it back. It's now 12 to 8. Dreyfus, good move. Dreyfus trying to get through. Good defense. Lost control of it. Ball's on the ground. Adam Donovan trying to pick it up. And Dreyfus gets back for it. 2.45 to go. Here's Beckett Melhorn. Melhorn tried to send it across the middle. Good takeaway by Whitney. Whitney gives it back up. He was at an odd angle. That was an unfortunate turnover. Underhand shot. And Parento with a nice save. Parento sends one way down the field for LeBlanc. And LeBlanc gives it forward to, here's Verano. I was looking for Marcotte, couldn't get it there. Now here's Ronan Flynn. Flynn getting some jabs, but he's evading them. And now we're down to about two minutes. And they're just toying with South Portland now. Yeah, that's what you have to do, just kill the clock here. Under two minutes to go, up by four. And this is a timeout called by T.A. Well, Zach, as uh, you know, like you said, there's a small chance. You know, we're putting it, I'm putting the chances at 10%. Maybe that's a little overzealous that, that Cape Elizabeth loses today at home. Yeah. Um, if they do lose, we'll be back to you, I think, on Wednesday for the Class A South Final. Um, T.A. Cape. 
Uh, if they, if Cape does win, it'll be at Cape Elizabeth. Sorry, it would be, you know what I mean, Thor Academy not host Cape. It would be Thor Academy against mm -hmm. Falmouth. Um, Cape wins, not Falmouth. I'm getting all my, yeah. I'm getting my scores mixed up because we got baseball also going on. If Cape lo oh Scarborough, sorry. So it'll be either TA hosting Scarborough or Thor Academy at Cape Elizabeth. Um, if not, this is our last broadcast. What are your over the overall thoughts from? I know we looked at next year. What are your overall thoughts from this year? Maybe a memorable moment from one of our broadcasts. Mm. We've done about forty-five broadcasts this year. That's pretty crazy. Rough estimate. It's a lot of talking. Um. Uh, well, my own personal highlight was getting to do the uh, playoff games at the Crowd Insurance Arena for WHOU with, with uh, you were there too. You did. We did all. Yes. I think we did six six games, eight games. Something like that. Six. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was a lot of fun getting to do uh, some. Did get to get to the TA girls one time. That was a lot of fun. The the basketball seasons were great. There were some great hockey moments. I know the hockey moments are electric. Hockey's one of my favorite sports to broadcast. I think that Cape Elizabeth game we just did uh, was a great one. Um, I'm trying. First, first year we've done football, which is kind of cool too. First first year we've done yeah. football, football broadcast had, on TA football TV. Football had some great ones. I think it was fun to be at the state game, be on the sidelines. That was great. It was a lot, a lot of uh, memorable moments. Um, I mean, nothing that, like... You didn't have any buzzer beaters or big No, dunks. no buzzer beaters. I mean, there were a couple of dunks this year, but nothing yeah, crazy. Nothing like Peyton Jones is from a couple of years ago. There was one, though, I was talking about. I was talking to Alicio Marcus, actually, a couple of days ago, where he, I uh, remember, he almost dunked over J.P. Estrella, but he missed the dunk. Yeah. He, he he got he got there with the ball hit, like, the rim on on a weird angle, and it just Estrella didn't bounce from Duke. It's crazy. Yeah. T.A. is trying to finish this one off. Under two to go, and Lucas Hubbard's going. He gets stick-checked in the arm, and he's still going. And just wrap it around the net. No, no, no man advantage for anybody here. TA's just trying to kill this clock and head on to another regional final. No goalie either. They're just leaving the net open. Oh, they did that, yeah. Another penalty coming up on South Portland. They're just being very aggressive now. This is So this is what Cape did to TA, and TA fell for it. Or no, yeah, Cape fell for it, and they took a shot at the net. Yeah. Yeah, put no goalie in. And that's how Thornton kind of got the ball back. And that time it does not work. Nice job. Nice pass in front. Lucas Hubbard grabs a goal. It's going to be a flag as well on South Portland, like you said. Gordon Flynn, another assist. Flynn has six points as well. So Flynn and Marcotte, and even Alex St. John having a great game. That is 13 to 8. One minute cross check on South Portland as well. I mean, at this point. People should be calling off the horses. <laughs> you know, we've got a minute 13 left, five-goal game. It's a wrap. Good job by South Porn to stay in it, but T.A. just got the better of them. And T.A. putting in some sub-68 coming in. I don't think I've seen him much today. 68 is Adam Donovan. He's a great defenseman. He's played a couple, a couple minutes in this game. Goalie back in for Th South Portland. It's a hard way to end a season. In a very unusual and aggressive game like this, I'm gonna be honest. Even the Cape game, which I think was such a big uh, matchup, wasn't even this aggressive. It nope. wasn't that many, you know, hits or anything like that. And then now Ethan the blank kind of just hold it down, and Frank trying to put some pressure on. Raymond will take a shot. Good save by Q. Raymond loses control. There's a man of interest for TA. It's like, I mean, for TA at this point, too, you're just no reason to commit penalties. And he just hit, and one. there you go. Yep. There's number 20 he's going. Just like, they can't help themselves. Oh, 20's now getting into it with Verano. Uh, well, not a way to end your season if you're South Portland. They just can't control their emotions. I mean, TA shouldn't be, should be committing a foul. There's no question yep. about it either. And don't be talking either. I'm sure Coach Hershey would talk to him, but, like, my goodness. 20 grabs, uh, extra oh. unnecessary. Yeah, and so Hershey's not happy with his player at all. Good talking to you from all the coaches. And slams his helmet for good measure, too. It's too bad. You know, kids get emotional, understandable, but this game's gotten a little bit out of hand. The referees, I thought, have done a pretty good job considering they've called pretty much every penalty. Yeah. It's just neither team could control themselves. So 20 got a penalty for a little extra sl slash on Flynn, who was on the ground. 
and then Flynn's in the box for the check. But Ronald's in the box for the aggressiveness. I think they're just like they're they're, they're not tolerating anything. So for no, both Verano and go. number twenty are yeah. getting uh, everybody should go unsportsmanlike for the. But I mean that's just that just can't happen by number twenty. You can't throw your stick down and just kind of rush at somebody. It's just not. It's really not how a uh, high school sport should be conducted. But you're right. Emotions run high when you've lost, and you know the other team is. Just running around in circles, and the refs are trying to figure out something. At this point, I don't really know if the fouls matter. So we're down to 40 oh, four seconds. seconds, right? For TA, it's like you don't want to just jeopardize anything <laughs> for the next game. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. don't want. Let's see what the ref has but to you, say. You can see Coach Ryan Hersey is was visibly frustrated with Verano. Two minutes for number four, unreleasable. Two minutes for Flynn. Slash for one minute on TA. So maybe the unreleasable was on not was on Verano, and then the slash was on Flynn. Unsportsmanlike like one minute for South Portland. Twenty. Three, three minutes. minutes. In. So, well, it doesn't matter. I mean, one minute, two minute, three minutes. It's only forty seconds to go, but just more of the. So either way, both teams are going to be down almost nothing, and whoever gets the ball should just run out the clock. Let's just yeah. <laughs> let's just wrap this up. If there was a stat for the man of like the percentage you have of man advantages, I think both teams are probably like <laughs> zero of fifteen at this point, or zero of twenty, because they've had so many penalties in the games like this. So it looks like. Uh, Verano may, may be a little uh, not be in the, the high hopes of high thoughts of Coach Ryan Hersey right now. No. I know how good of a player Verano is. So I don't know. Look, the whole thing was kind of set up by Thorne Academy committing a penalty when they shouldn't. It's 40 yeah. seconds to go yeah. by five. Yeah, okay, you should give the ball away, but at that point, just let it go. So both teams. Definitely a little bit overzealous here in the last half. This whole half has been – the first half was pretty clean. I mean, it's almost nothing. The second half, it's been – I'm going to be honest with you. This has been the longest minute yeah. in a while. LeBlanc has it, and I don't even – No reason to go towards the net at all. I, I don't even think – How many players are out there? I mean, this is it's, it's four it's on four. <laughs> you don't see that very often in lacrosse. I don't, I don't even know if they're going to try to be aggressive. Nah, I mean, Frank point. is trying to put some checks on, but he's not trying to be so aggressive to get the ball back. They're just – yeah, they're gonna they're gonna let it go here. I think if, even if somebody else took a penalty, they may not even <laughs> they might get some guys in this. So the blank will hold Ten it. Ten seconds. Yep. And that is gonna do it. So Thornton Academy <laughs> holds off South Portland, and they're moving on to the Class A regional final versus the winner of Cape Elizabeth and. Scarborough. TA wins a long game, lots of penalties, but they get through it. That stuff can't happen in the Cape King. But not, that, nope. yeah, that is going to be the what looks like our last broadcast of the year. I want to thank everybody who's listened, and we'll definitely have a lot more and uh, and a lot of broadcasts next year, as well as Trojan Talk. Don't forget, Trojan Talk going to start up next year as well. Uh, so thank you everyone for listening. That is going to do it for this broadcast. We'll keep you updated to see if Scarborough, you know, pulls off an upset. Maybe we'll have another one here. But that'll do it here from Hill Stadium. I'm Zach Taranko with Jeff Christianberry saying thank you all for watching. We had a great year, and we will see you all very soon.